Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I want to do a little quick impressions review jammy on Life is Strange. Here I have a limited edition. Um, this is for Xbox One, as, as you see. It was recently, it went back up in price now. It's $20 for the regular edition at GameStop. I think $17.99 for a used copy, and then at one point, what GameStop does is if they don't sell their collector's editions, um, I guess in like a good amount where they have like spares, they'll end up dropping the price like drastically. There is one I'm keeping my eye on right now in another store that I'm, I'm contemplating getting, but anyhow, um, not to get too off topic, this went down to $19.99 the other day, and I saw a couple GameStops in the area with it. My friend um, Brian, who works there, he happened to have one in his store. He said, you know what, for $20, bucks, let me pick it up. I, I, Why well, I get the regular edition for $20? I get the limited edition. And I'm glad I did. Um, the limited edition is like nothing outstanding. However, it does come with a soundtrack, which, as you can see, it looks like it's like, you know, a bootleg. Like somebody drew it up and like made their own liner notes and stuff. And a cute little like art book with pictures and like little graphics from the, the game and like storyboard type stuff. Um, the director's commentary it mentions on the back as well is actually free for everyone. So if you go on your PlayStation Network or your Xbox Live, you can just download that, period. Um, that's really not part of the box, but it says it is. So, Life is Strange. The, the thing I would probably make it mo say it's most equivalent to is like a Telltale game. It reminds me of what like Sega CD would be now. Uh, if you haven't played a Sega CD game, a lot of them were full motion video, which I absolutely adored. They were live actors and then you'd pick different choices and then whatever choice you took, uh, hopefully if there's enough interaction in the game, would change what the next thing was. Almost like a choose your own adventure, but with live actors. They've now done a lot of like Telltale games, The Wolf Among Us, Borderland, uh, Tales from the Borderlands, The Walking Dead. There's lots of games like this now that are almost like, you know, you have to push buttons at, with certain time, like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, quick time events. This doesn't have any quick time events, by the way. Um, though it does have one annoying stealthy section, slightly annoying. Uh, you know, you have to choose different dialogue, depending on what dialogue you choose, things change. Sometimes you can pick up items and use them, stuff like that. The, the focal point of Life is Strange is you're a young girl, Max Caulfield, going to college. I think you, you're going to college, if I recall, at the beginning, the beginning I don't remember fully, even though I just finished the game yesterday. Um, you go into college and you're kind of getting back into town and seeing all your old friends. I think you went away for a while to a different school. Um, something of that nature. And you start linking up with your old friends and then you, you notice there's bad things happening at the school. So it has that like Buffy the Vampire Slayer vibe, but not vampires and werewolves and shit. You then realize at the very beginning of the game, so I'm not really spoiling anything, and this is the selling point of the game, you can reverse time. You can reverse time and change your answers. You can reverse time and talk to people differently so that if someone gets like, killed, you can go back now and change something. They won't get killed or you can disrupt something in a way. Things like that. That's the main point of the game, changing time. It really, really is, it feels like a labor of love. It feels like these people really wanted to grab things that they loved over the years and make a game for people that like the Telltale type games or the Choose Your Own Adventure type games. Um, a couple of characters that did get slightly emotionally invested in. That's one of the main draws of this game. You will get emotionally invested in some of the characters and some of the stories. There's some really cool plot twists. Uh, I would say like two of them, really. Is he biting? Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. I wanted to make sure Mario the tortoise wasn't... Uh, he was letting him walk around so he wouldn't clunk in the tank. I wanted to make sure he didn't bite anything he wasn't supposed to. Like a wire. So, um... Where was I? The uh, the game really pulls from a lot of different things. There's lots of Easter eggs. You will notice a lot of Twin Peaks references. Uh, I don't know if I should really want to mention any, even though they're small, um, in terms of things like a license plate. There's a Quantum Leap reference. You know, there's lots of things like that. But they really invested into this game in terms of the, the, the characters feel fleshed out. You feel like you're back in high school almost. It sounds kind of funny, but they really got the vibe right between the soundtrack playing in the background sometimes, which is, I think it's cool they gave the soundtrack, I'll have to give it a listen. You know, the way that people interact there. So, some of the interaction I'm not a huge fan of because I'm now 32, 
So when they're like using stupid terminology, like, I don't know, hello, whatever, or I don't think they say like YOLO or swag, thank God, but stuff like that, you get my point. I can't really like relate to that, but I do understand, you know, we said stupid shit back then too. So I still do. So um, point being, it's like a choose your own adventure, you know, adventure game, you can pick up items, but more so it's about the dialogue. There is one stealth section at the end of the game, which was a little annoying, but not so bad. You know, I mean, it wasn't like super trying or anything like Metal Gear. And um, it, you really feel invested. And then by the end of the story, you're like, oh my God. Like, you know, there's just, there's so many cool plot points that change. And I would say, even if you find the first chapter to be a little slow, because I did, it really picks up by the second and third. It's only five chapters. The game, they said, is between like 10 and 15 hours, I believe. It's like two to three and a half hours a chapter, depending on the chapter and if you do everything. Uh, one of the main points of the game is, too, you can take pictures of things. So you can't take a picture of just everything. There's certain, you'll see like a, an option to take a picture of something or you'll trigger something. Like at one point I picked up uh, peanuts I put the peanuts on the floor and these squirrels came over and I took a picture of the squirrels. You get like achievements or trophies if you take optional pictures during the game because your character, Max Caulfield, is a photographer. That's one of the, the main things. That's why the cover is a picture of her in a picture. Um, but if you like time travel, um, the Telltale type games, um, I, w I wouldn't say quick time events because there aren't any of those, but things like Shenmue, things that, that have a deeper story, that you want to um, invest some emotion in, invest some emotion in, I would definitely check out Life is Strange. By the end of the game, I was like, oh man, this is so good. You know, at the beginning, it started off a little slow. By the end, it was great. The graphics were pretty cool. Um, they're like a cell shaded almost type thing. Like, they look very comic booky, cartoony. But realistic enough that you, you see, like, you know, um, expressions on the character's face. It's not like cartoony where it looks like a cartoon cartoon. Um, like I said, the soundtrack's really cool because it sounds like, you know, young girls or, or college-ish girls hanging out in the room, kicking back, listening to music and dancing on the bed or whatever. So it's just a great game. I don't want to say too, too much because I don't want to spoil the plot points, but there are some cool plot twists. The only thing people disliked is some people didn't love the ending. I thought the ending was really good. They also felt that your choices through the first four chapters don't really change the fifth chapter enough. And I understood what they meant by that, but I think they had to do that because you can't like tweak every little thing in a game to sort of change something. I mean, yeah, they could have changed at the ending a little bit on each, you know, maybe made six endings instead of two, and like, you know, each one's slightly minutely different depending on what you did. But I thought I, I felt gratification from the ending. I thought the ending was good, um, and you almost wonder what happens to the characters afterwards. So, really great game, and lots of Twin Peaks references. So, if you like Twin Peaks, time travel, all that good stuff, check out Life is Strange. It's still twenty dollars at GameStop. Microsoft Store sometimes has it for like ten. Um, I just like physical editions, so that's why I picked that up. But overall, very pleased. Check it out. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.